In this presentation, we shall be looking at what happens to a substance when it goes from a solid to a liquid to a gas. Now what you should have learned by the end of this presentation is what particles are, how to draw particle diagrams for solids, liquids and gases, what happens to the particles when they absorb energy, and what happens to the particles at the exact point they are changing from a solid to a liquid, or from a liquid to a gas. Now, almost everything is made up of particles. These particles are so small you can't see them. Now, there are several different types of particle, but they all follow simple patterns. We can show these patterns by drawing the particles in what are called particle diagrams. In these diagrams, each little circle shows a particle. Solids are drawn like this. The particles are in very neat rows. They are touching at their edges, which shows they are joined together. Because the particles are so compact and can't flow over each other, this means that solids are hard and rigid. When drawing liquids, the particles are not in neat rows. Not all of the particles are joined together. Because not all of the particles are joined together, liquids can flow. This is because the particles move over each other. Gases, on the other hand, don't have any particles joined together. The particles are just moving around randomly, really quickly, regardless of what the other particles are doing. Now the words solid, liquid and gas tell us what state a substance is in. So how do you get from one state to another? Well, we're going to think about a common everyday example. What happens when you leave a chocolate bar out in the sun? Well, you go from a nice, hard, solid chocolate bar to a much less appetizing, melted chocolate bar. This is the process of going from a solid to a liquid, and we call this process melting. Now this process occurs because the sunlight is giving energy to the chocolate bar. As the chocolate bar gets more and more energy, its temperature increases. And when a particle gets energy, it vibrates. The more energy a particle receives, the more it vibrates, and therefore the higher the temperature of the substance. Now we're going to have a look at a quick animation to show just what is happening to the particles. Hopefully you'll be able to recognize the solids in the bottom of the beaker. The particles are in nice neat rows and they aren't moving over each other. They're just vibrating around a fixed point. Now as we increase the heat, the particles vibrate more and more until eventually they've received enough energy to become a liquid. Now here you can see in the liquid the particles are moving over each other and they're moving much faster than they did in the solid. That's because they have more energy as a liquid than they did as a solid. If we continue adding energy by heating the substance, we get a gas formed. Now you can see here the particles are moving much faster than as a liquid or a solid. That's because they have more energy. You can also see they're not joined to each other anymore. They're just flying about randomly in all different directions.
So what is happening to the particles when they change state? Now in this heating curve you can see what happens over time to the temperature of a substance. You can see as the temperature increases the substance goes from a solid to a liquid to a gas. The general trend of the line going left to right is an increase in temperature but it isn't a straight line. You can see two places where the line goes flat and this is where we go from a solid to a liquid and from a liquid to a gas. We call these two interchanges state change boundaries. It's where you change state. Now if we start at the bottom left hand corner where we have a solid, you can see over time the temperature increases. This is because the particles have had m more energy transferred to them, they're vibrating more and this raises the temperature of the substance. When we reach the state change boundary however, the energy which was going into making the particles vibrate faster isn't doing it that anymore. The energy is going into breaking the bonds between the particles. Now when you're going from solid to a liquid not all of the bonds are broken but when enough are broken we form a liquid. Once the liquid has been formed the energy goes back into making the particles move faster which raises the temperature and you can see the line gets higher again. This is until it reaches the next state change boundary going from a liquid to a gas. Now just like before at this point the energy isn't going into making the particles move around faster it's going into breaking all the bonds so that when we form a gas all of the particles are separate they're not joined together anymore. Once we have this gas the energy then goes in to making the particles move faster and this raises the temperature again. So hopefully you can see that it's not just as straightforward as going from a solid to a liquid to a gas just through heating and the particles moving faster. Now what you should have learnt by the end of this presentation hopefully you should know what particles are how to draw particle diagrams for solids, liquids and gases what happens to the particles when they absorb energy and what happens to the particles at the exact point they are changing from a solid to a liquid from a liquid to a gas if you are still unsure about any of these points please have another look through the presentation and finally do not forget to fill in your worksheet so that I know you've viewed this presentation